Um, these are my camp risers, as you can see on the screen. Let me uh, type in real quick the call in line number so you guys can call in and chat with me if you guys want to ask questions. Uh, I want to take your calls today and every single day. I, I feel that now uh, this is going to be a good you know, time frame for me to have my show. That's going to be that 9 a.m. window. Um, works for my schedule. I hope it works for yours. You know, during the summertime, I was doing it at 7.30 in the morning, and um, that was working for my schedule. We went to the season yesterday, 49ers could certainly use, and I think, uh, I think Kendrick, so when you're talking about camp risers, guys going into the season early on, look, we've had four practices. I'm going to talk about each of these individuals and explain why these guys make my camp risers list at this point in time. Let's start from the left and work our way to the right. And I got Kendrick Law. I think Kendrick Law is absolutely being slept on. Um, you know, I, I posted some footage of him yesterday. Guy, I don't know how much he weighs, maybe 215, maybe 220. I've said this for years. If you've watched my show, I feel like he is kind of a Debo Samuel, right? And I think what I mean by that is I think the 49ers could certainly use him. You know, how they use Debo Samuel is a way that Alabama could use Kendrick Law. And I think if you're creative enough to use a player like Kendrick Law, he can do absolute damage for your offense. I think he is... Um, he was vastly underrated last year. He was vastly underutilized. And I think it was a travesty because he's probably a player that, you know, given the right context, given the right amount of plays, he'd probably be in the NFL right now. So good for Alabama. I mean, their wide receiver room is absolutely insane. Think about all of the guys that Alabama has in their wide receiver room. It's absolutely kind of an embarrassment of riches, right? As we like to talk about. Um, three, three, four, I'll get to you in just a second. I appreciate you calling in early on the show. Let me roll through these camp browsers. And I'll get you. Um, let's talk about uh, you know Kendrick Law and how we see him fitting into this offense. So right now, how you have the wide receivers? You have Kendrick Law, you have Kobe Prentice, you have Jeremy Bernard. Of course, you have Ryan Williams, who's who's coming on strong, and a handful of other wide receivers. Cole Adams. A lot of people talking about Cole Adams is kind of like I saw. I think it was a twenty four seven that has an article as him Mister Reliable. Makes sense. I mean, this is a guy who could just come across the middle of the field, catch it, turn it up field, make you miss. Whatever the case is, but I think we're vastly uh, sleeping on Kendrick Law. I mean, the footage of him, you guys saw it. What is he? I mean, good luck tackling him at 215 pounds and he's running like, what, a 4-4? I don't know. I think Jalen Murrow might be the fastest player on the team, and then it's like Kendrick Law. So, um, vastly um, sleeping on Kendrick Law, in my opinion. I also want to give some kudos to Justin Jefferson at the inside linebacker position. Now, I listed him as a first-team guy. Um the, the first team backers, there's three of them, and this is coming from Kane Womack. So you have um, the, the two notable, uh, Jaha Campbell and Deontay Lawson. I think those are going to be the actual guys who are your first team guys, right? First team uh, inside linebackers. And then you have Justin Jefferson, who isn't too far behind. Look, there's nothing wrong with having quality depth at all. Um, I love that. I love the fact that he's getting um, you know notoriety at this point in time. I think it's good for him, and I think he's going to have a really good season. So talking about Justin Jefferson, will you please uh, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up? My other guy is um, Caden Proctor, and I put these nice little emojis on there. That's what I spent the last 10 minutes doing. Um, I'm giving him a lot of respect, Caden Proctor. Okay, shocker, right? He's back at the first team. But you know what? It takes an adult, it takes a man, it takes a, a woman to admit that, you know, Look, a decision wasn't the best decision for them. He did that. He was like, look, I went to Iowa. I wasn't feeling it, even though I'm from there. I, I want to finish what I started at Alabama. Clearly, he's talked with the leadership council, with his team. And, um, you know, he he's hashed that out. And he earned the starting spot back with uh, Alabama. Number 11, by the way, that's Rico Scott. I see your uh, question inside the comment box. Um so I love that. I mean, look, you said what you had to say. You get bumped back to, you know, starting left tackle with Alabama. Love to see it. And Caden Proctor, man, the, the more and more you look at the Alabama's offensive line, the more excited you get about Alabama's offensive line. Caden Proctor, Tyler Booker, Parker Brailsford, Jaden Roberts. Will conform me. Now, really, the only question is, you know, can Kane Proctor, has he really improved? Can Parker Brelsford snap the damn ball? And how good is Wilkin Formby going to be on the outside? 
Jim Lee Breaker is uh, saying Valley Grand is just north of Selma. Yeah, because Jeff was in Selma. Um, all right, so man, he's between Auburn and Georgia, man. Hey, be careful, Jeff. Man, you're enemy territory. By the way, Auburn, look, I, I, this is all Alabama football, but the in-state guys are going to Auburn. At, at this point in time, they're committed to Auburn. I mean, that's not just, I'm not making stuff up. Like, this is factual information. I think Alabama has two in the top ten. Uh, Turbo Rogers, really haven't heard anything about him, and then Micah DeBose, right? Other than that, all those guys going to Auburn for the bag. And then, the, what, the number one player, he's going to Ohio State. Nick Saban didn't let that fly. The in-state guys were going to Bama. And I think these guys will start to, you know, figure out once this. Because, you know what happens? I'm going to talk about my camp risers, but you know what happens? It just takes one game to not be a cool school anymore. Right? Some bad headlines. So, these guys haven't signed anything. Right, getting pretty worried recruiting wise. They still got the number two team in the country. Right, you just got to get these guys to sign. I'm not worried about it. It's just like the in-state stuff. It does make your head turn a little bit. But I mean, is Auburn going to keep these guys if they start losing games? I don't know. Um. All right. <clears throat> My fourth camp riser is Keon Keeley. <sighs> I like guys. Not to say that he went through any adversity changing positions, but you didn't hear him complain about it. Talk with the coaches, felt it was a better spot for him to be at the bandit position more than the wolf in this 4-2-5 defense, right? Somebody who's a little bit bigger, but still athletic, put the hand in the dirt, get pressure on the quarterback. Saw some highlights of him recently where he was getting, you know, big paw on, uh, I mean, it looked like it was going to be Ty Simpson. And then, they, and then Alabama, like, cut that clip off. We don't know what happened after. But Keon Keeley with the big hand coming in. Keon Keeley, Yonzi Pierre. Those are two guys I still believe in. And, um, yeah, Keon Keeley making my camp risers list because I think it's just a matter of time until he gets on the field and uh, he does his thing. Number 20 right there, that's Jameer and Latham. I put together a video. I released it yesterday. And it talks kind of about the players and about the numbers because I know everybody's trying to figure out what numbers are who and all this stuff. Um, if you want to call in and chat with me, the call in line is 205-850-1994. It's, it's pinned at the top of this message uh, board. So if you look to the top, you'll see like a yellow banner. Click it. And that's the, the call in line. All right. Um, let's talk about... Uh, my next riser and that's austin mack say what you want he's a 13 quarterback i have someone in the chat that that keeps going on the chat and he's like he's much more than the 13 quarterback and i know i know that for a fact i don't know who this person is but he's like pretty adamant about it <laughs> look the team has their first team quarterback which is Jalen Milrow. but austin mack he's he's good we talked about this you know a few times people weren't impressed with him in the springtime that was a spring game he just got here Right, it's like give him give him a little bit of time. God, you gotta admit, on the footage that you've seen out there, the dude is throwing like, I mean, Jalen Miro's ball, man, it looks like one of those vortex footballs that you used to have, right? Remember growing up? Did I just date myself? Remember those? They had like the whistler in it. it you guys get what I'm saying? It had a whistle ball in it. What were they called? And you would just launch the hell out of this ball, and it would whistle. Right, it was like a nerf, and then they had the ones that it, that lit up at light at night. You couldn't catch those ones because of like the depth perception. Remember, and they had like a tail on it too. There were some balls that had like a tail for like extra launch. Yo, these guys have been airing out the ball, and I don't get why people get mad when they see a deep ball that looks good against air. People are like, "Man, I'm mad about the the deep ball. Don't want to see the deep ball. You want to see a 60 yard touchdown?" <laughs> Jalen Milrow's deep ball percentage, what was it, like 99 last year? It was crazy. The shorter intermediate, it'll come. Chill. Chill, but damn, like, the dude, the dude can throw it. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at, uh, so this show, what I wanted to do is, I feel sometimes, since it might be the old wide receiver in me, we start talking about, um, <laughs> 